Greetings members, greetings subscribers and greetings everyone. In this video I have a star guest, singer and beside one of the athletes of the Animal Olympics, Tom Zones Gazelle. Welcome to the studio, dear Gazelle. If I understand correctly, your nickname is Tommy. Can I call you so? Thank you. I'd be a little surprised if you said no. Let's revert to serious. Thompson's gazelle is a species belonging to the order of the even-toed ungulates, within these belonging to the Bowit family, and the subfamily Antilopinae. Its current scientific name is Eudorcas Thompsoni, but previously it was also called Gazella Thompsoni. For science it was described by the British zoologist Albert Karl Ludwig Gotthilf Günther of German origin, or in English Albert Charles Louis Gotthilf Günther, in 1884. He was a member of the Royal Society. It was named after the Scottish African explorer Joseph Thompson and was first recorded under this name in 1897. It is closely related to the Mongala gazelle, Eudorcas albonotata, but their relationship remains debated. I mean, it is debated by the scientists, not the staff members of the monitoring station on the small bench of the main street of Clan Wyapis Gwingis Gogerus Windrobus Vinticilia Go Go Go. By the way, that's actually an existing town in Wales, that if I spelled it correctly, of course. There are scientists who consider the Mongala gazelle a subspecies of the Thomson's gazelle, and there are those who consider both as separate species. However, in the case of Hewlin's gazelle, there are those who consider it a subspecies of the red-fronted gazelle, while others also consider it a subspecies of the Thomson's gazelle. But oh, hold on! Some people also consider the Thomson's gazelle a subspecies of the red-fronted gazelle. Never mind that. The most important thing is always to reach an agreement. So, currently, Thomson's gazelle belongs to the genus Eudorcas. Mainly. The photo on the screen shows the genera of gazelle. Antilope, Eudorcas, Gazella and Nanger form a clade within the genus Antilopini or gazelles. A phylogenetic analysis in 1999 showed that the Antilope is the closest sister taxon to the Gazella, although according to the earlier phylogenetics proposed in 1976, the Antilope was a sister to the Nanger. By the way, the genus Antilope, described by Pallas, has only one living species, the Indian Antelope, also known as the Black Buck. In 2013, in a revision of the phylogeny of the Antilopini, on the basis of nuclear and mitochondrial data, scientists created a cladogram that clearly depicted the close relationship between Nanger and Eudorcas. The antelope and the gazelle had a similar relationship. Well, family tree project done. Am I right, Tommy? Now, two subspecies of Thomson's gazelle have been identified. The nominal subspecies which Günther described in 1884, and this is the Eastern Thomson's gazelle. The holdings of these clan members extend from Kenya's Rift Valley to the east, southeast Kenya to the Arusha district of Tanzania, and west to Lake Eyasi and Shinyanga. The members of the Serengeti clan, referred to as the Nazali subspecies, which was described by the Swedish zoologist Axel Johan Einar Lundberg in 1908, roamed the lands from the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania to the Kenya Rift Valley. So it can be said that the Thomson's gazelle ranges over a relatively narrow part of the savannas of East Africa. Compared to the fact that we are talking about a relatively small species of gazelle, it is the fourth fastest animal in the world, which means a speed of 80 km per hour. It missed the podium behind the cheetah with its 96.6, the pronghorn with its 88.5 and the springbok with its 88 km per hour. 
Its height at the withers are 60-70 cm. Bulls weigh between 20-35 kg, while the cows only fluctuate between 15 and 25 kg. And their tails are between 17 and 25 cm. They have white rings around the eyes, black stripes running from the eyes to the nose, rufous stripes from the horns to the nose, and a dark spot on the nose. The color of their fur ranges from reddish brown to rusty, with a black stripe running along their sides, from the upper part of the front leg to the upper part of the hind leg. These are like the design stripes on a formula car. There are also black streaks on the rump. Only the red position indicator and the brake lights are missing. Bulls have preorbital glands near their eyes, which they use to send their territory. Both sexes wear horns that curve slightly backwards and then turn back in a wave. These horns are ringed. In the case of bulls, they are between 25 and 43 centimeters long while in the case of cows between 7 and 15 cm, but those of cows break easily, and some are even hornless. The Grand's Gazelle is also very similar to Tommy, but it is larger and it does not have the black stripes on its side and rump. The two subspecies differ in appearance. The eastern subspecies is larger and has lighter spots on its muzzle, while the base color of the Serengeti subspecies is whiter on its muzzle, but the spots and stripes are more prominent. And at the same time, calves of the eastern subspecies have smaller horns than the horns of their bulls. I guess I'm not saying anything new when I say that the Thompson's gazelle is a herbivore. In the rainy season it mainly eats fresh grass, but in the dry season it eats more of the foliage of bushes and herbs. During the rainy season adult male gazelles graze extensively, often living together with grand gazelles and impalas, and for example in the Serengeti they follow the herds of zebras and blue wildebeests, and where the other animals graze on the taller grass, the gazelles, in a good way, pull the shorter one. Sometimes they are hunted by leopards, lions, African wild dogs, hyenas, crocodiles and African rock pythons, but due to their speed their main predators are cheetahs. But in the long run gazelles are better at running, in addition they can zigzag while running and thus often avoid doom. Jackals, baboons and eagles also hunt the fowls. Sometimes they leap high, called stutting or pronking stretching themselves to show off their strength. During the rainy season, when food sources are abundant, dominant bulls control a larger area, while young bulls live in bachelor herds and cannot enter the territories of dominant bulls. That's not the case for the cow herds. The bull that owns the fattest pastures is lucky. In this case, the bulls tries to herd the cows, and they usually succeed with individuals, but when the cows want to live in groups, they cannot prevent it. In their territory, the bulls gore the grass, soil or bush with their horns and mark it with their glands around the eyes. Dominance is decided by young bulls with a fight, but adult bulls are more ritualistic. By then, their fontanel closes. When the bulls of two neighboring territories meet at the common border, they start a similar ritual, where they symbolically run towards each other but without colliding, and then leave the border line by grazing backwards. If a bull chases a desirable cow, but in the process runs into another dominant male's territory, the previous male will not follow it to the other side but it will pass the baton to the neighboring bull and that continues the chase. When they catch up they sniff around to get to know them better. Afterwards they start courting and then the inevitable happens. The gestation period is 5-6 months. The cows leave the herd and give birth to a single fowl. 
The fowl spends the first six hours with its mother, then the mother moves away from it, but returns for an hour a day to nurse. In these cases the female approaches the fowl very carefully, not to give away the location of the fowl to the predators. During this period the cow also meets with other cows, but the fowls remain separate. The mother protects the fowl from smaller predators, but not from large ones. This goes on for about two months, after which the fowl begins to join its mother several times. In the case of young cows, they are fully joining their mother at about one year of age, but the case of young bulls is different, as they are not allowed into the territory of dominant bulls. Sometimes their mother does not leave them alone, so the mother does not enter the dominated territory either, but after a while it leaves the young bull and then that joins a bachelor herd. Cows reach sexual maturity at 9 months and bulls at 17 months and they can live for 10-15 years in the wild. At the present time Thomson's gazelle populations are estimated to be around 550,000 individuals. Between 1978 and 2005 the population decreased by 60% including those living in the Serengeti, Masai Mara and Ngorongoro parks. Regardless, as I said, this is one of the most widespread species of gazelle and its conservation status is least concern. Like so many animals, the Thomson's gazelle has also appeared in animated movies. For example, in the animation Zootopia it appeared as a pop star whose voice was Shakira. However, it also appeared in a very serious work, and this was Monty Python's Flying Circus. Come on, seriously. Well, what's really serious is that if you liked it, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join the community if you find this information and videos valuable. Special videos are available for members which cannot be viewed otherwise, for only 1999 Hungarian forints per month, approximately 2.5 dollars. Just saying. And thanks again to those who have already honored me with their membership. Write your opinion and additional information that you would like to share with others, and if you haven't seen the other videos yet, do watch them. If you've already seen them, watch them again for repetition. Have a fun day. Seriously.